नमस्ते आप सबका स्वागत है स्पीकिंग ऑन वेरिंग पैरेंटिंग so uh, i would not elaborate much and not uh, waste time and let anshudhi actually keep the session on and uh, i expect if you all can just come a little more forward so that other people when they come they can actually join us properly so yeah thank you so much namaste anshudhi ji namaste um my charge dhanyawad jo mahode नमो नमः गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम थैंक यू ऑल फॉर बीइंग हियर and i uh, would start just like dhruv mahoday said by uh, thanking uh, sanskrit bharati by cheshgiri ji uh, sudhir ji uh, who have been very very enthusiastic and been working tirelessly to bring our core indian subjects to all the indians everywhere and this time in singapore and at the same time very very thankful to shri shiva prasad ji of sampurna swadeshi who is also another tireless worker of sanatana as we call all of us and so am i my name is anshu dubey and i am associated with sanskruti arya gurukulam uh, some of you were uh, there in the morning session that acharya ji has conducted and uh, acharya ji is one person whose uh, introduction usually takes if we give it in proper detail about half an hour he is such a learned person and he has Uh, studied in a paramparik uh, way through the rishi uh, gurukul parampara uh, under uh, shri puja shri vishnath uh, guruji of varanasi and uh, i happen to be a shishya uh, of uh, of sanskruti arya gurukulam and at the same time i also uh, try to learn and be a shikshak to the uh, students of gurukula there uh, we have a a residential gurukul in uh, currently situated in uh, gujarat rajkot and what all of us are trying to do under uh, acharya ji's guidance is to take forward a lot of sara of the crux uh, of the indian knowledge that uh, i call him the bade guruji because he is a guruji we call uh, i call mehul bhai acharya acharya ji the guruji and he is a bade guruji puja guruji so he has what he has done that in his entire life for about 50 years or so he has done a deep study contemplation of the veda vedantas ayurveda and there have been various phases and what he has done that for people like us in modern day what is it that we are supposed to do how we are supposed to actually understand and take from the what we call the indian knowledge systems what is something which is relevant to us today and it's not that we leave the rest of it but the idea is to know the trick of how to understand these subjects these very big and heavy vast subjects and then try to align ourselves with the core with the essence of sanatana as we call it so today we uh, thought that it is it is a uh, since we spoken about life we spoken about how we are supposed to keep ourselves healthy through ayurveda that is something that we uh, guruji shared yesterday and today uh, with the, some of you who were present there as well where we focused on the ahara vihara and the vyavahara and it is not something which is needed for the health of self though of course our our biggest concern is our present our our selves but there is an extension to us because we are all human beings this is a jeeva srishti this is a the srishti is samashti srishti and vyashti srishti so in this srishti we are we human beings are not the only jeevas 
what sanatan says that there are a lot of jivas wherever there is consciousness consciousness present there is an anshop atman everywhere there is a jiva so we of course have a jiva and atman in ourselves and the the beauty beauty of humanity is that they are why they are considered a level above rest of the jivas rest of the jeev srishti why are we better than the animal uh the animal kingdom uh you know the bird srishti or the, we call the pashu srishti the pash, uh, pakshi srishti what is it that differentiates us now one of the things which actually differentiates us from from rest of the uh, uh, animal kingdom or rest of the srishti pashu srishti is the idea of one language and two what we call the baudhikata or the intelligence the cognizance now how do you define cognizance we have a lot of modern scholars who talk about the idea of cognizance from a philosophy perspective from a physical science perspective but essentially the idea of cognizance is is something which can be interpreted very very logically in a very structured way and that is what our rishis have done through thousands of years and out of that there's one one core which came out is that uh, uh, there is in, in the entire srishti in all the species you have a male and there is a female and the male and the female mate and there is a child which is produced or there is an offspring i should not use the word child i should say an offspring is produced but when a human child a human offspring is born we usually call it a child though of course we have the nouns we have given the names to all all the uh, pashu srishti uh, offsprings as well but a human uh, offspring is called a child now what actually differentiates a human child from any other species is the idea that only humans have the capacity to pass on their experiences and their intelligence to their offsprings and that is what makes humans parents mother and father uh, you know someone who has given birth to a, to an offspring is the mother is a biological mother and the male who has contributed with the seeds is the father so that is the mother and the father so if you already have the words mother and father why did we need the word parent now we all understand the concept of parent the moment we say parent okay fine we have we have some children and we are the parents of that so does the parent only mean the mother and the father or is there something else so there are two terms that we usually know we call it motherhood and fatherhood matrutva and pitrutva so what actually is matrutva and pitrutva is the idea that is a group of qualities which actually makes a human male and a human female give and transfer and actually make a, a human child into a human being manavatva or manavta how do you make a whole manav is what matrutva and pitrutva contributes to now this also is very good to understand at a uh, at a mental level okay fine we understand the concept so what what are you supposed to do about it you know the moment the children are born we become parents so what is so different about it and what is this idea of vedic parenting on top of it we understand parenting we are supposed to bring up the child we are supposed to give good sang open to the child and then we are parents so what is this vedic parenting actually now why do we have to talk about this concept or what do we say about vedic parenting now bade guru ji what one thing that he there are a lot of observations the way he makes it and the way he presented to us is is phenomenal so one of the things his uh, his uh, understanding of the human psyche of the manav shastra is something which is second to none and out of that there are there is a very important core that he took out what he said is called the kutumba the parivar so what is one of the many things which keeps india or bharat unique from rest of the countries from rest of the civilization yes we are the only living surviving civilization for thousands of ages so thousands of years now one of the very important things is that for tens of thousands of years we have been able to actually carry on this civilization how we been able to do that because we have been able to transfer that knowledge add to it and then pass it on to the next generation that's what makes us a civilization so for these tens of thousands of years this 
this idle family system the kutumba system that we have created is something which has survived there are so many civilizations which due to various reasons have collapsed they have vanished they have uh, we, we, we knew about the mesopotamian uh, mesopotamian uh, civilization the egyptians the uh, you know there there there's so many of them and after that when there was this era of uh, Uh, you know trying to acquire the other civilizations when people wanted to rule the other people they went on and they actually destroyed the civilizations so the core civilization of africa of uh, latin america australia we know that they do not they have they have completely been uh, uh, terminated they have been uh, they have been completely they have been completely destroyed and there is a, there is a certain kind of uh, uh um, how should i say a method that has been tried to brought on top of that so they do not have their own civilizations anymore but the bharatiya civilization is still intact which has had so many of invasions we we all talk about that oh you know we have lost so many things because we had so many inv- invaders but look at the positive side of it what is it that we have been able to retain and why we have been able to retain whatever we have been able to retain now the core of that is something which is very casual which is very sahaj which comes to us which is the family which is our kutumba system so what we typically call parampara so parampara doesn't always mean that you know okay fine when someone comes to your home you have a ritual that you greet them in a certain way but parampara essentially means that when you acquire the knowledge to do certain things in a certain way you pass it on as a samskara to the people around you to the people who are related to you to the people who are associated with you and that is that samskara essentially means what is it that is given to a human as as something which is a purushartha that is something which is called a samskara as so sanskrit for example sanskrit comes from the word samskara so the one who is uh, sanskarit is is a sanskrit and that's why sanskrit becomes a dev bhasha it has a very different stage and in sanskrit bharati and uh, jeshagiri swami ji when he take their classes they explain that concept very well so that sanskara is something which gets passed on very very naturally to the next generation to generations after generations after generations and that happens very very casually in in the indic civilization and that is what has actually kept us alive for so many uh, when we say us we mean the civilization alive for so many years so what guru ji has what he did that it, this uh, we usually talk of two big epics ramayana and mahabharata we take lot of examples from that we take the examples of uh, niti we take the examples of law we take the examples of uh, how to survive we take the examples of adhyatma we take the examples of maryada purushottama we take the examples of vachan so many examples that we take from ramayana and mahabharata but two fundamentals that you see which are there at the at the root of both of these historical epics that we now use to motivate our lives is the family so when we say okay fine what is mahabharat all about when you have to explain it in one line what do you say oh it is a tale it is a katha it is a story of uh, two families or one family of pandavas who you know who uh, fought all the odds and then came out winner when you talk of ramayana we say oh you know there was there is a maryada purushottam there is a hero who had you know to keep the word of his father who he, he went to vanvasa for 14 years and his wife accompanied his brother accompanied who were all those people who put them together as a unit that is a family and see the kind of parenting do you think there is any, there is any parenting aspect involved in the family of rama do you think there is any parenting aspect involved in the family of pandava in the fam- in the family of pandu and in the family of dhritarashtra are you all aware of these names dhritarashtra pandu the five pandavas i believe at least our generation would be if we are passing it on in the right, right detail to our next generation not that is that is for us to test ourselves with but what is it do you see there is any difference between the family of dhritarashtra and the family of uh, pandu pandu had two wives kunti and madri they had five sons did they had five sons yeah they had six sons karna was also there right so they had six sons but uh, was was pandu the parent to karna no was kunti the parent to karna yes was she the parent she was the biological mother 
But was she the parent? No. Now, the way we understand Mahabharata, was Pandu the father of Yudhishthira or the five Pandavas that we know? They were Devaputras, right? They were incarnations of uh, Dharmaraj, uh, incarnation of uh, Indra, incarnation of Vayu, incarnation of Ashwini Kumaras. So, was, was he the biological father per se, as we know the epic? But was he the parent to them? Yes. yes. So, we identify the difference between the two. So, this concept of parenting, Abhibhavakta, as we call it in, in Sanskrit or in Hindi, is something which is there in our civilization from thousands of years. Right? Don't get confused by the modern science which tries to date Mahabharata to only 5000 years and Ramayana to probably 7000 years. Let them, you know, fight their battles on what is the right date. Do they know the, the complete Kal Garda uh, uh, practically well? Have they developed the, uh, the instruments for that? Let them fight that battle. But for thousands of years, we definitely know that. Let me go uh, one level up. We all know what India, when it comes to knowledge, one thing that everyone associates to Bharata is Vedas. And the Vedanta, of course, post that, right? Vedas and Upanishads. We know that. Another very important man that we know is Chanakya. He is very popular today. He is trendy today. Huh? Everyone talks about the nitis, the laws, the smartness to rule is something that you should learn from Chanakya. How to be a king maker. King maker. Everything that you, uh, you know, when you talk of modern law, you talk of modern politics, you, we talk of Chanakya. Yeah, it's fashionable to put a picture of Chanakya in the, you know, for the, for the people who are leaders, who are politicians and all that. But do we know that a very important sutra of parenting, the crux of parenting has been given by Chanakya and Niti Darpan. And that is something that you see here. Lala yet pancha varshani dash varshani tada yet prapte tu shodashe varshe putram mitra vadachare. What does this mean? This is the crux of the life of a child well, that from the time he, he or she is born till adulthood. Pancha varshani lala yet. For the first five years of life, you are supposed to take care of the child with care. Pampering is not the right for worry, but with love. Lala yet panch parshani, lalan. You've heard the word in Hindi or in Sanskrit, lalan palan, sangopan. So, lalan essentially means dular, means adoring. So, you are actually supposed to bring up the child or your fundamental has to be the adornment factor. So, the mother becomes very important. Lala yet, how does it so? We will talk about that. Lala yet pancha varshani, das varshani tada yet. For the next 10 years, so 5 years we spoke about that, 0 to 5 years, take very good care of the child, be very pampering, be very uh, adoring to the child. Next 10 years, which is 6 years to 15 years, 16 years. Das varshani tada yet. Now tadan doesn't mean beating. Tadan has a lot of meaning, right? There's a very uh, conspirational uh, uh, shloka these days of Ramcharit Manas. Shudra Kavar, Dhoru Pashunari, Yesam Tadan Ki Adhikari. There's a lot of debate going on. Oh, you know, you see it is, the feminists actually come up and say, Oh, you know, they're talking about beating the woman, they're talking about beating the this thing and they talk of a lot of caste system and all that. But Tadan, the word Tadan has, it's a multi-meaning word. It's an Anekarthi Shabda. Taran means watch. Taran also means discipline. And discipline does not mean punishment. So there is one word and that is why these are called sutras. A sutra is something which has a very big meaning. But because our sages have been so, sorry to use the word, damn intelligent. And they are at a different level. They are at the parabuddhi level. That they are able to put this big piece of knowledge in just one sutra and just few words in a pada. So, what you are supposed to do for the next 10 years, which is 6 years to 16 years is Dash Varshani Tadayet. Observe, bring up the child carefully. So, there are a lot of things that the parent is supposed to do. After that, Prapte Tu Shodashe Varshe. That means after the child has reached the age of 16, what you call the teenage. Huh? The, I think that is a period where the parents who have children of that age, oh, that is the most trouble sometimes. 
Oh, teenagers, they are very difficult to manage. They are rebellious. They do all kind of strange things that we do not relate to. And especially if you are in a different country, uh, then your own, uh, I would say, where the own civilization, the own culture, it becomes even more difficult. Because what the child sees, what the child gets in the school is very different from the original culture that we have. So the, the responsibility or the, you know, the, uh, the anguish increases. Oh my God, I can't control what the child is learning in the school and see how he's becoming, how she's becoming. So it says that once the child achieves 16 years of age, after that your, your behavior with the child should be friendly, like a friend. So become a friend of your child. Now becoming a friend of your child does not mean that you let the child do anything that he or she wants. Be a friend, that means they have to be more of sambada. They have to be more communication. There has to be more understanding. And why is it so? We'll talk about that. So what Guruji said, that the right balance of love and discipline is something which is needed in parenting. Prem or Anushasan. We all understand the language of love that is something which even the modern philosophers are also getting to acknowledge that the power of love or you know when, when uh, there is a commitment involved it, it really can even treat people. So the right balance of love and discipline doing it the way it has been done for so many years doing it holistically is what is called Vedic parenting. Now why we have given it the name Vedic? What is Vedic about it? Parenting is fine, it's parenting, there's something because we are an old civilization, things have happened, they have evolved on their own and that's what we follow. So that's simple parenting. What is Vedic about it? Just because it is going on for thousands of years? No. Just like I shared just one example from Chanakya who is even from the medieval age. It's not even called the Vedic age where, where Chanakya existed and that's where he is given a sutra which is something which is beneficial to us for I think many generations to come. Now imagine the, the knowledge that our Vedas and our Upanishads and our Vedantas have, but it is scattered. And we do not have the time, we do not have the sources, we do not have the Yogita to actually go and explore that and then take the essence out of it. So what Guruji did, Pade Guruji did in his entire lifetime, when he did this entire Manan and Sanchodhan, he actually came up he, or he took out the sutras from various uh, from various texts, from various Vedic texts and actually put them together for us in the form of some sutras and he created upasutras, when say upasutra that there is a main message and under that how you are supposed to break that message, the upasutra that is what he created, it is like a practical manual that he has given is a like fine in the modern time people do not have the time or they do not even have actually the yogita how many of us know sanskrit right uh, uh, sudhirji and uh, sheshagiriji they sometimes they say you know we want more and more people to join but not many people join those so that is for sanskrit sambhashanam which is very uh, easy to understand sanskritam now the knowledge which is actually imbibed in so many sutras or in, in Vedas, it is very difficult for someone who just knows uh, no or very little Sanskrit. So what Guruji has done that he has actually taken that crux out and say fine, you, I have done this job, you learn how to implement it and take care of your children so that you are able to create a generation, you are supposed to be able to create Nagriks that you can give to your Rashtra that you take care not just of you for yourself or the parents but also the also the country also the the society now why the society is why the society is important all of us most of us have either children planning to have children will have children in future or now have become grandparents we are we are all in the in the either of the categories now when we say that and you ask every, any parent and say, do you think you are a good parent, you are bringing up your children well? Say, yes, I am the best parent in the world. Okay, then what do you do as a best parent? Oh, whatever my child needs, I make those things available to the child. All of them. He needs, what does he need? He needs food, he needs clothes, he needs education. I am, and especially the fathers say that, I am the man of the family, so my job is to provide. So I provide. I buy everything that is possible 
and then if I am not able to buy something that my child wants, I slog myself, I aspire for that promotion, I get more money, then I get my child what he or she wants. Yeah? So that is my achievement. I am a very good parent. You ask the mother and say, oh, I feed my child. And you feed, keep feeding your child. And you feed whatever the child wants. I feed my child. That is my job as a mother to feed my child. I am a very good parent. Now, if we say that, if you feed the best of the things to your children, if you give them the best of education, the best of things, how come we see some of the very fundamental problems that we see these days, especially after COVID and Corona, when the children were uh, restrained to homes and houses and they had to do all their schooling over laptops and computers or phones and uh, they could not go out to play. I'm sure the similar restrictions were there in Singapore as well. They could not go out to play. What is it that after Corona, after the restrictions got eased out, the lockdowns were over, the what we, we got to see, not just in India, but all across, as far as children were concerned, in spite of having so many of measures and the vaccinations and so many things, the general immunity of children has further deteriorated. Everyone is the best parent. You're feeding your child the best. Remember, Whenever any parent is asked individually, they are doing the best for their children. Then how come the immunity of children getting low? Right? Second, their behavior. In the morning session, whosoever was there, Guruji took an example. He, he spoke about a family where they went and the, uh, the young girl opened the door. She did not even greet. She did not even ask her parents to come inside. I'll, I'll elaborate on a different example. So the idea is one thing which has changed tremendously is the behavior of children. It was already at a certain stage which we typically, we were not like that when we were children. But our children are like that when there is a, when there is someone who comes home, they do not know that. Of course, parents, uh, the children do not know everyone that, that comes home. But there is a fundamental behavior which is missing that whosoever comes home greets the person. That is gradually going away. A parent is saying, I am the best parent. I tell the person to say Namaskara, do Namaskara. If there is an elder person, do Sashtang Pranam. Right? But I am the best parent. Then how come the child is getting into that behavior? Another important point. Stress. Children are facing stress. Can you identify? Does any one of you have an example where you say uh, you feel that your child is stressed? What is the symptom that you see that you that helps you identify that your child is stressed? Does anyone have a stressed child here? And there's no pinpointing here. Please do not take it as a, as a personal uh, question. What it is just to share? Sleepless nights. Sleepless nights. That is a symptom of stress. They are not able to sleep. Or when they sleep, they, uh, they talk in their sleep. They have disturbed sleep. They take, they, they turn around, they turn and tossle in the bed a lot. Yeah? Or they throw things. Yeah? What, when we are in stress, when adult, as adults we are, we are stressed, what is it that we do? Anger. Anger. Frustration. I am trying to make a call to someone. I have not charged my phone, my battery dies and that urgent call cannot be made. What do I do? Yeah? That's what I do. Or I blast off someone. Best thing to do in office. You always have a junior. Everyone will always have a junior. Look to your junior for any reason and blast your junior. Yeah? And we face that as juniors. We also have seniors. That is the best thing about corporates. Everyone is a junior and everyone is a senior. So you get a blasting from your this thing. Anything? Why the hell? Right? You say, why are you not try? There's nothing, there's, there's nothing wrong, everything is happening. It's actually stress that is taking out and you, you feel that, oh, he, you know, he has a fight with probably his boss or his promotion was, uh, you know, he did not get a good appraisal. So he's blasting, blasting me off. So when a child is doing that, do we identify that? There's something else which is happening, which he or she is not able to address or not able to understand that they they react in this certain way. This is something that we all see. Sometimes we see in our children, we ignore it. We see it in the neighbor's children or relatives' children or friends' children. We say, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah we do that lot of us do that so the idea is if all of us are so such good parents why are these problems happening and what is wedding parenting got to do with it i anyway get a lot of parenting books i get a lot of uh, good uh, consultants who are available there are counselors available in schools there are counselors available in colleges okay fine if there is some problem i'll take the child to the counselor uh, the, ch the child will have some sessions sometimes is even recommended in the schools especially when it comes to western education the more west you go or in the more developed countries you go there are uh, you know the schools have rather more or better control on children then say oh you know you, your child is counseling the child your child doesn't understand the concept of personal space he comes and you know bullies the other child so what do they say when you there is a complaint that the child bullies the other child the child who gets bullied or the victim child their parents will definitely go and fight with the school but the bully child what does the bully child's parents do do they defend or do they rather scold they do both the things there are some who scold in front of the school in front of everyone and there are some who actually uh, uh, shield them no 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 my child is not like that child only would have done something or you know they are children they fight and what we do oh is you are the school it is your job we transfer it on to the school you are the one who is supposed to maintain the discipline you are supposed to ensure that children don't fight but as parents what is that we are doing at home i am the one who has kept my or who has thrown my phone away i am the one or this is the wife who has shouted on the husband or the husband who has who has told the wife uh, certain things in certain way the child is only listening and the child is observing and during corona time he or she has done that for almost 2 years regularly day in and day out because everyone was at home not just the children the father or the the working parents were also at home everyone was trying to work from home there is a two room apartment there is a three room apartment everyone is trying to look for a quiet corner where they can have their conference call yeah and they sometimes say, oh my camera is not working there is some challenge now in singapore you can't say that my connection is not work, is weak in india that is a very good excuse so my connection is a little weak i'm switching off the camera na no? okay i switch off the camera and gradually after some time they switch off or we mute the mic as well and then what we say we you know dimag kharab kar rakha it's been so long ye meko you know this uh, is been going on for 2 hours there's nothing productive which is happening then you you start blabbering you are not sitting in a soundproof zone your children are around around they are not listening to that conversation they are observing your behavior that you are saying something else when you have your mic on and you are saying something else when you have your mic muted what they grasp as not the words that you say what they grasp is how you behaved so do you identify the difference is that something which could have happened with most of you yeah you have their three friends are planning to go on a kitty party or trying to do something i say oh you we are, we are the best mothers we are housewives so we spend all the time on our children we don't work there are some who take uh, you know they say it very proudly but actually the time that they are spending is on their mobile phones and say oh we can't help it that's this our child who is uh, we can't take the child off the mobile what to do what does he or she see the moment you are free from any household or the first thing that you reach out for is your mobile phone whatever it is oh you i have to send a very important message or there are very important messages on facebook yeah now the branding is such all these companies spend so much money even if the child is like you know about 20 feet away he would be able to recognize that what you have on your phone is a facebook or a whatsapp or something else right they would not see that you know they might you might even actually have to do an urgent message but then in case you call someone versus when you send a message and after that you what do you do you just browse once let me quickly see you no know, someone's message is there if we are sitting with a phone in our hand we have a habit of fidgeting with whatsapp let's see you know the thumb is always working and you see the speed with which now the kids play the video games you can't beat their thumb speed where do you think they have gathered that from yeah smartphones are the ones he called them the smartphones and there's a saying which is now getting popular the smartphones are making the children making us dumb 
they are taking the smartness away from us and it is everything has been put in the machine so what actually it does that it it actually learned the child actually learned the smartness of your finger fidgeting oh i need to be sitting with the phone yeah these are some of the things now how does vedic parenting come into picture now what is it that vedic parenting can do about uh, uh, you know keeping my child away from mobile phone he doesn't get up in the morning it's very it's every day a problem for me to you know send the child to the school and when they become teenagers oh there is no way they can get up in the morning right guruji was talking about that in the morning so what ke karenge kya on a sunday i don't get up in the uh, in the morning early every day i have to go to school or to college or university but sunday you let me sleep huh? what will i do if i i don't have to go to college or i don't have to go to class i don't have to go to tuition why you make me wake up early that is something that all of us face huh? my child if there's a small child he doesn't like bathing he, he doesn't like bathing what do i do yeah we stick to that he doesn't like to brush his teeth or he throws things away so these are the certain things that we list yeah i'm think all of you would be familiar with some tantrum or the other if i really want to call them tantrums constantly watching tv he or she doesn't even blink the eye yeah they, i'm sure some of you would have definitely observed that same thing happens when they play a game on video observe that that your child dash varshani taad ye you don't have to hit the child observe the child that the child doesn't blink his or her eyes and they playing on that and what they are playing any video game i do not know too many of them but there is a fundamental in every game that you keep going forward whatever block you are receiving attack it in a certain way you have instruments which are given to you or sadhanas or sources which are given to you use them kill that badha move forward get points move forward get points but move forward to where there is no lakshya there is no end in the game oh you can you can earn 20000 points you can go to x level they have levels and they have points all the video games work in two ways right that's what they do so what is it what is it that they are actually building into the child lakshya hinta directionlessness there is nothing that he or she has to achieve just keep stay busy so that's what they do and as long as we are able to take the child's uh, focus away from that we think yeah we have done our job problem solved so all these things that you see here i try to list about 14 points most of you would be familiar with this yeah and we say if we get to the bottom of these problems if we are able to solve this then you know we okay fine whatever was left in our parenting it is now complete but vedic parenting actually starts after that it doesn't work at the level of body the manas shastra or the idea of having your indian knowledge as your background means that you understand what all constitutes a human being and the foundational years the building years for any human being are the childhood and not even the childhood actually now when you associate yourself or acquaint yourself with sanskriti gurukulam guruji today only i think uh, uh, talked about this fact that actually your parent your actually the journey starts from garbha from the day a child is conceived actually a parent is born on that day so the responsibility of parenthood actually starts even before becoming a biological mother or a father where you plan in such a way that you are able to conceive healthily and whatever you would do in those nine months where the bigger responsibility is on the mother but that does not mean that the father doesn't have to do anything or his job is only to give the visa no before that because what a child inherits that's what ayurveda tells us that's what our panchakosha uh, vigyan tells us that there are certain characteristics there are certain gunas that the child inherits from the mother and there are certain which he or she inherits from the father whatever may be the gender of the child that does not mean that only the son would uh, inherit what the father has the daughter would inherit what the mother has no and these gunas are the small gunas yeah the uh, you know the way a woman thinks the way a mother thinks the way her heart reacts 
physical heart as well as her mind, her manas reacts. That is what gets transferred to the child. The digestive system of the father gets transferred to the child. That is the Indian genetics. So the knowledge of that is equally important for a parent. So parenting is, there is a, uh, I have just written another uh, sutra here. We all coming back to the Veda part of it. Uh, when we say I want to associate and acquaint myself for, with Indic knowledge, everyone wants to read Vedas and they want to start by that. What do they say? Oh, let me get a translation. Gita Press and a lot of people are written on that. Let me start by reading it. That's okay if I don't know Sanskrit. I'll start reading with the translations. So everyone wants to start with the Veda. But the sutra for a, to start reading Veda or to become a Vedavan is Matruvan, Pitruvan, Acharyavan, Veda. If you want to be an Adhikari of reading Veda, of knowing Veda, then you have to be Matruvan. Matruvan means someone who had a mother. That doesn't mean biological mother. Someone who has been brought up by a woman who has who had motherhood or who has motherhood. Similarly, Pitruvan, Bhava Pitruvan Veda Arthat, the one who had a father. Acharyavan, the one who had an Acharya. Unless you had these three, you cannot become a Veda, you cannot become a knower or an expert of Veda. So this is how important Matrutva and Pitrutva or parenting is. If we are not being good parents, we do not become good parents, we actually hamper our child's growth, knowledge, intelligence in the future. Uski atma yatra ko rokte hai. So that is the damage we do if we become immature parents or if we do not know what is it that we are supposed to do under parenting, which is not restricted only to the problems that we face, the things which are visible to us. All these things are something that you get to see or at the most observe. But the idea is to go beyond this problem solving, beyond these physical and uh, uh, sometimes psychological traits that you can observe and go on to the manas, go on to the intelligence, go on to the cognizance and understand and learn what is it that you are supposed to do that you can actually bring all these things in your children, what you call the good characteristics, what you call the gunas. Now, we say no, it is not possible. We just gonna give a lecture and then we would know what we are supposed to do. Yes, that is how simple Guruji has made it for us. And that is why, that is why we talk of Vedic parenting. So, today we only have about an hour and a half for us to acquaint ourselves with the subject. But the idea is there is, it's a very detailed subject and it is what we are trying to do that we are trying to develop it. It's already there. I mean, it will be out probably in some time in form of a course. It is a very elaborate course. There is also books. There, is, there are a couple of books which are already published. Guruma has written that. And these, this is what you would find. And if you think these, these are all your problems, then the book is your solution. You know, all the solutions to the how to address these problems has been given in the book. Now, let me take a very small example. Doesn't like to brush the teeth. Lot of you would have faced that with your children. So what we do, uh, you know, the 7 o'clock the school bus will come or you are supposed to go and drop the child to the school. At quarter to 7 is when you wake up the child. The child who has actually slept at 11.30 in the night because he or she was also up watching something with you. And you try to wake, wake up the child at quarter to seven. Come on, come on, come on, we have to go to school. Half asleep child is what you drag to the wash basin, put the paste on the brush for the child and give it to the child. Yeah, and even at the younger age, when you try to force that brushing, the child is half asleep. So when, when someone is half asleep and we are half asleep, if we are made, if we are forced to do something, what is what is our first reaction? That we push it away. And especially in the, the younger ages, when you try to push this habit, that is when the child actually develops a very natural instinct to push it back. No, I don't want to brush my teeth. On the same way, no, I don't want to take a bath. Why? Because when we are trying to, you know, trying to be very good mothers or uh, grandmothers, and we are giving a bath to the child, especially when they are in infant age, 
you know the soap goes in their eyes and their uh, it goes in their mouth it goes in their nose or the water goes they are they are they're crying they're still trying to uh, you know give them a bath the water goes in the nose it goes into their uh, uh, the vein in their respiratory vein they they and that memory actually gets imbibed in their in their uh, head so later on for probably for rest of the life also because then you you would have seen that lot of children the moment they get to go to the hostels to study in college boys and girls both it's not restricted to only boys the first thing that they give up is taking bath every day a number of them whoever is teaching in a college or in a university would know that or if you have your friends and family ask them the first thing that the children give up boys and girls both as i said is bathing see the sanskara or the bad memory which got imbibed in the childhood where does it percolate and we know that there are lot of problems there which are involved with bathing every day and not bathing every day especially for girls for ladies it's all the more important so it has got nothing to do with feminism that oh you know why do you force a lady to take a bath every day and not a man you are different a man and a woman is different they are anatomically different they are kosha wise different they are not the same do not expect the same treatment and the same lifestyle and same everything for both of them unequal and uh, not similar are not the same thing or equal and similar are not the same thing equality is something which is something to do with the societal status probably but similarity is not a man and a woman is not similar similarly a girl child and a boy child are not similar their bringing up is different little different their education style is a little different yeah so all these things get become part of vedic parenting so the solutions to these 14 problems or similar problems you will certainly find in the book so what you are supposed to do when the child says no i don't want to take a bath or i don't want to brush my teeth is to have this knowledge one don't use the toothpaste yeah toothpaste we know that madhura rasa the, the rasa which is the worst for your teeth or for anyone's teeth is the madhura rasa kashay and uh, tikta are the best rasas for uh, for your teeth salty and little uh, you know the sea water taste that is kashay that is the best rasa for teeth madhur rasa is bad for uh, for teeth right like the problem we face children eat a lot of chocolates and uh, they don't gargle they don't wash their mouths they don't clean their mouths so they get cavity they get a uh, uh, lot of things in their teeth mostly because most of the things that they eat are candies or uh, pastries or sweet things madhur rasa is not good so what the whatever the toothpaste has is usually the madhur rasa they are anyway half asleep what they will do they will swallow yeah so idea is one solution or when they swallow it of course it's going to do certain things bad things to the digestive system and the younger the child the more sensitive the digestive system is the immunity is still building up so that will create a problem so that memory will again go in so what you supposed to do one when the child is half asleep or is not completely awake don't make the child brush the brush the teeth what is the solution can you send the child school to the school without brushing no you cannot then show to the child sleep to the right time the night before and that is a parent's job that is not the school's job so we are supposed to and what what do we do with that oh you go and sleep it's 9 o'clock we going to go and watch tv or some serial no the children are so closely associated with their parents especially the mothers they wait for the mother to finish the job i think yesterday only we uh, we felt that shiva prasad ji has been hosting us and his wife is is, is a fantastic lady so we we went home we got a little late she was serving us food the children were they had their time to sleep but they did not sleep till the time the mother slept so the idea is to ensure she ensures every day that if they have to get up in the morning she sleeps in time so it is the uh, it is the job of the parent to ensure that the child sleeps at at right time so that he or she gets enough night sleep to get up in time when the child is fully awake then if you make the child brush the brush the teeth not with that paste 
you have the manjana if you have datun is uh, to uh, i mean the child has to grow up a bit for to to start using the datun but the manjan is what we have and when we do it with a finger the child is engaged is your own body part you would not put extra pressure that is one of the techniques the reason we use our finger for doing manjan and not a brush is because the you know both of them are your body parts your teeth is your, your body part and your finger is also your body part so the pressure will never be extra with brush the brush is brush doesn't have a life it doesn't know sometimes when you brush it brush a little harder the gum uh, you know gets an injury especially for children so what do we do solution is look for a softer brush no go for manjan teach the child so and the child would be busy also it so this is just like one of the solutions i spoke about out of for these problems but vedic parenting goes beyond that is saying fine these are challenges that you can definitely work on but the main purpose is the samskara now why we spoke about samskara something with the purusharth if you imbibe a certain characteristic a guna into a human being that is samskara and all of you would have definitely heard of shodash samskaras have you in a lifetime of a human when we spoke of the vedic way of living we say there are 16 samskaras in a person's life yeah what are those sanskaras garbhadan sanskar so conceiving a child is a samskar it is not an accident or it is it is not supposed to be an an act of sexual intercourse no that kind of children are by products that is not the intention they are by products of sexual intercourse that is not the intention to so the very first sanskara a human's life into the world into the srishti starts with a sanskara garbhadan is also a vidhi and that is something that under garbha vigyan guru ji spoke about that today in the session is what you also supposed to learn because the parenthood actually starts from the very first sanskara even from before the child is born before the child is even conceived so you need to know the vidhi of garbha garbhadan sanskara to be able to do the garbhadan in that way that the uh, you know the 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 process happens in a normal way and better than normal way that is a garbhadan sanskar so all the sanskar garbhadan sanskar ponchavan sanskar simantanayan sanskar jata karma namakaran nishkraman annaprashan mundan all these do you, are you familiar with these names do you do have your children done all of them most of you would say yes probably or no probably either of the two answers right now garbhadan sanskar is conceiving the child punsavan sanskar is where you ensure that the 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 life of the child is secure and it you know the the growth happens in in a uh, in a pushed way and in a spashed way so there is a, there are a lot of uh, this new wave of lgbtq you would have all heard of that as eh? singapore is leading in trying to make it an equal society you would have heard that the rainbow the lgbtq punsavan sanskar in any way anyway, it was something was knowledge it was restricted to india punsavan sanskar is gone the spashtata of the gender which actually starts from the physical anatomy happens at the punsavan sanskar stage punsavan is not for the male child do not be under the impression that it is for a male child it is not it is for a uttam santati it is for a swastha santati we have people who have got punsavan sanskaras done in argar uh, in in sanskrutiya curriculum who have had daughter who have had girl childs so it is not something which is done to have a male child so in case someone is trying to give you someone is saying oh you know this is going to be a short short boy let's do this punsavan sanskara give me 10000 dollars don't go for that this is not the purpose so punsavan sanskara is for that then anavalokan guru ji spoke about that al simanto uh, nayan is to ensure that the uh, that the uh, bones of your uh, the, the the skull where the sukshma rupa the sahasra chakra is made is is actually uh,